Hey guys, um, so sorry I can't be there in person with you today, um, but I'm just not feeling well at all. Uh, so for that reason, I'm taking a sick day. Uh, but as you know, of course, the show must go on. Uh, we've got a lot of work that we need to do, especially with multiplying fractions. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we're going to continue where we left off last week. Um, so what I need y'all to do is go ahead and open up your math notebooks. And if you will open up to the notes I had you glue down, uh, for most of you, you glued those down this morning. If you're in my homeroom, these should have already been glued down um, last Friday. So if you'll find the page that looks like this right here on the TV screen, <coughs> It's called basketball or football. All right, so while y'all are turning to that page, if you remember last week, it was on Friday, we began uh, learning how to multiply a fraction times a fraction. And so we talked about how there are some different reasons why we would multiply a fraction times a fraction. Um, so we can multiply a fraction times a fraction if we have a multiplicative comparison. So where you're comparing uh, two things to each other, we could also be solving for the area and then we could also be doing part of total. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this basketball or football task here to just review um, kind of like a fraction times a fraction and look at a certain type of reason why we are doing a fraction times a fraction and that would be one of those reasons i just mentioned which again is either multiplicative comparison area or part of total okay all right so at this point you should definitely be on the correct page and we're going to go ahead and start with basketball or football look at part a all right so for part a <clears throat> sorry <coughs> excuse me, for part A, it says, of the two-thirds students that participate in sports at Laughlin Middle School, one half of them participate in basketball. Draw a model to find the fraction part of the students that participate in basketball. So we are going to draw a model, but we're not going to draw exactly the model that they're wanting us to draw. So just hang with me for a second, okay? So the very first thing it tells us is that of the two-thirds students that participate in sports. If you look up here, I'm going to underline that right here in pink, okay? So right here, look at the TV screen. It says, of the two-thirds students that participate in sports. So we're looking at the students at the entire middle school. So we've had word problems like this where we've had a whole birthday cake or we've had a whole pan of lasagna or we've had a whole pizza or something like that. In this case, we're talking about the students that go to Laughlin Middle School. So what I'm going to have us draw here for our model off to the side, start by drawing the whole. So this hole, just give yourself like a, a rectangle here, doesn't need to be very large. <clears throat> This hole represents all of Laughlin Middle School. So basically meaning that this hole represents one school. I'm trying to draw this the best I can on my computer. All right, so write this with me. This represents one school. So this rectangle here is the entire school all of Laughlin Middle School, so all the students who go to this school. What it says is that of the two-thirds students that participate in sports. So what we need to do on our model is show two-thirds. So we're going to divide this into thirds, and then we're going to shade in two of those thirds, okay? So when it says two-thirds of the students that participate in sports, what that means is, look right here, that is your total. That is the total amount or fractional amount of students that participate in sports at this school. So I'm going to switch colors here to blue, and you don't need to do this, but just look. So what does that mean about this blue section right here? What is that blue section? That blue section shows us the one-third fractional amount of the students that do not participate in sports. So we know that two-thirds 
of the students do participate in sports, that means that one third of the students do not participate in sports. And how do we know that? Because the two thirds that do participate in sports plus the one third that do not participate in sports, well, two thirds plus one third, that equals three thirds. That would end up giving you, look right here, one whole school, okay? So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> is I'm gonna erase that one thirds there because we're not talking about the students that do not participate in sports. I just wanted you to kind of see how our model is representing the students at this school, okay? So this word problem <clears throat> is about the students at Laughlin Middle School who do play sports, okay? So going back to what it says here, look at what I underlined in pink. Of the two thirds, that the students that participate in sports, it says one half of them participate in basketball. So we know that two thirds, that's going to be our total. So I'm going to come up here and label that as my total. We know that that is the total fractional amount of students at this middle school that participate in sports. Well, it says one half of those students that participate in sports are only playing basketball. We want to know what fractional part of the students participate in basketball only. So again, <clears throat> two thirds of our students play sports. Well, it says half of those students that play sports just so happen to play basketball only. So what fraction of the whole school is just playing basketball? That's what we're trying to figure out here. And actually, we can go ahead and continue this model the way that they wanted us to. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> so it says, draw a model to find the fraction part of the students that participate in basketball. So what we've got again is our two thirds students who participate in sports. I'm gonna switch to a blue color here and let's show that half of these students play basketball only. So how would we show on our model that half of our students play basketball only? Well, we would have to take the students that are in the whole school and we would have to then cut this in half, meaning we would have to partition it in half. So go ahead and draw a line that goes across, draw a line that goes across, that's cutting it in half, but now we have to shade in this one half right here. I'm trying to circle it in blue the best I can. Circle, or I'm sorry, shade in the one half that participate in basketball. And remember, you have to go all the way across, even all the way across to this one third here, which represents the students that don't play any sports at all, because we want to know what fractional part of the students in the whole school play basketball. OK, so you have to go all the way across your model. Now, what you should notice here are some overlapping parts. So if you look right here, look, I'm circling it for you in black. This is your overlapping parts. So we've talked about this before. When you're doing a fraction times a fraction and part of total, your answer comes from the overlapping parts. Why? Because what we shaded in first in pink was the total fractional amount of students who play sports. But then we overlapped that with the students who just play basketball only. So you're looking for the part of your model that shows the students that play sports, but the, that sport just so happens to be the sport of basketball. And that's what your overlapping sections here are showing you. So how many overlapping parts do we have? You should have said two. And then how many parts do we have in all? That would be six. So two sixths of our entire school, Laughlin Middle School, two sixths of our students play basketball. So those two six students, which yes, that can be simplified. We'll talk about that in a minute. Two six of the students at our entire school play basketball. Now, are these the only students who play sports? No, because look at these pink sections here. Those two pink sections, those students also play sports, but they're not playing basketball. They're playing something else. OK, so how can we show with a equation basically that 
this is our answer, that two-sixths is the fractional part of students at our school that play basketball. What we just did here was solve for part of the total. We knew that two-thirds of our students participate in sports. We knew that half of those students are playing basketball only. So write this with me. So what we just did was P-O-T. I'm going to write that up here in the corner. We just did P-O-T. We just did part of total. So we just solved for one half. That's the fractional part of our students who play basketball only. And it was half of the two thirds total amount of students at our school that play sports. So this two thirds right here, remember that's your total. That's the total amount of kids at our school that play sports. Well, half of those students play basketball only. So for this one half right here, I'm going to put a B for basketball. Half of those students are just playing basketball. So once we've got this set up, half of two thirds, from here, it's simple. We know that of means to multiply, right? Because we've got groups of, copies of, and then we just multiply straight across. So we know one times two gives us two. We know that two times three gives us six. So that's two sixths. And I'm out of room. I don't, well, can I go off the screen? No, I can't. Okay, so I'm out of room, so I'm just going to put it down here below. Uh, but 2, 6 can be simplified. What would your greatest common factor be? That would be 2. So you divide by 2, and you get 1 third. 1 third. And if you think about it, we actually probably should have known that answer before we even solved it. Go back and look at your numerical expression. Look, I'm circling it in green. Half of two thirds, half of two thirds, meaning you take two thirds and you split it in half. That means you split it into two groups. So what number can you add to itself twice to make two thirds? Well, that would be, look in green, that would be one third plus one third, right? So if one third plus one third equals two thirds, and that means half of two thirds is one third. It's no different than saying half of 10 is five. If you know that five plus five is 10, it's the same thing. So half of two thirds, well, one third plus one third is two thirds. So half of two thirds is gonna be equal to one third. So we see that over here. Look right here. You see that in your model from those overlapping parts. And then we also see it from our part of total numerical expression. Okay. All right. Let's go on down and look at part B now. All right. So looking at part B, it says of the two thirds students that participate in sports. So it's still the same total. It's still a total of two thirds fractional amount of students at our school that play sports. But this time, look, it says one fourth of them play football. So again, we know that out of our entire school, two thirds, of, two thirds of our kids are playing sports, but only one fourth of our students who play sports are playing football only. So let's draw a model to find the fractional part of students that participate in football. So what's the first thing we're going to draw? Well, same thing we did in part A, right? We need to start by representing the whole so sometimes this is one whole cake. Sometimes it's one whole pan of brownies or whatever, right? In this case, what does it represent? We're going to write it again. It's one school. This is all of Laughlin Middle School. So this is the entire school. So in this entire school, <clears throat> what do we know? We know that two thirds of our students play sports. So let's show on our model the two-thirds amount of students that play sports. So same thing, we're going to shade in our two-thirds. Last time, we were talking about the students that play sports, and that sport, that sport just so happens to be basketball. This time, we know that two-thirds of our students play sports, and one-fourth of those students are playing football. So we need to show the fractional amount of students in this entire school that are playing football. So I'm going to go to my blue color here, and this time what we need to do is show one-fourth. So since we divided our school into thirds using vertical lines, let's talk, let's go ahead and divide our model 
into um, horizontal parts to show the one fourth of our students that play football. So I'm using my blue here. So we need to divide this into fourths. That means we're going to draw three lines. And then it says one fourth of them play football. So shade in one fourth. And remember, you have to go all the way across, even to that blank section there, because even though that section is blank, those are still students who make up our school. It's just that those students are not playing sports. Maybe they're in band only, or maybe they're in chorus only, or math counts only, right, or something like that. So even though those students, they don't play a sport, they still make up the entire school. They're still a part of this school, and we want to know the fractional part of students that play football. Well, that's the fractional part of students at the entire school, okay? So you still have to shade all the way across, even to that white section there of students who aren't playing any sports at all, okay? So now, how do we get our answer? How do we know the fractional part of our students in the whole school that participate in football? So I'm going to use my black here again, and what should we be looking for? By now, you should know the word. We're looking for overlapping parts. We're looking for overlapping parts. Why are we looking for overlapping parts? Because if it's shaded in pink, that represents the total students who play sports. If it's shaded in blue, then those are the students who play the sport of football. So if the, the sections are shaded in pink and blue, then those are your kids who play football. Okay, so that's why we're looking for those overlapping sections because football is a sport. So it has to be shaded in pink to show the sport and blue to show that that sport is football. Because like, for example, <clears throat> if you look at these other pink sections here, look at the other pink sections right here. Okay, see how they're not blue? See how they're pink only? What does that mean? If it's pink only, then that means those students, they play a sport, but that sport is not football. It could be basketball or soccer or wrestling or cheerleading, whatever, right? But if it's pink and blue, then that means it's the sport of football, specifically football, and that's what we're solving for here. So now the model gives us our answer. So how many parts are overlapping? two, and then how many parts did we divide the entire school into? Looks like three, six, nine, twelve. So that would be two twelfths. So we know that two twelfths is the fractional part of students in our entire school that play football. And again, yes, two twelfths can be simplified, and we'll do that in just a minute. So we've got our answer using the model. Let's go ahead now and get our answer using a numerical expression. So what would that numerical expression be? We said that one fourth, so one fourth of the two thirds sports players at our school play football. Okay, so again, this is part of total. Two-thirds was the total fractional amount of students at our school that play football. Well, one-fourth of those students who play sports, one-fourth of those students are playing football only. So you should write this as one-fourth of two-thirds. And then from here, we just multiply. Okay, so we'll go straight across. So we know one times two is two. We know 4 times 3 is 12, and look, we got the same answer. 2 twelfths from the model, 2 twelfths from the numerical expression, <clears throat> and then, of course, 2 twelfths can be simplified. So I'll give you a second to do that. All right, so your GCF here should have been 2. Uh, so we'll do 2 divided by 2, which gives us 1. 12 divided by 2, which gives us 6. So we're saying that 1 sixth of the students at this school play football only. One sixth of the entire school is football only. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's go down here and let's look at part C, our very last part. So now it says, write a sentence comparing the relationship between the fractions of students who participate in basketball and the fraction of students who participate in football okay so basically what we would say here so basketball that was one third 
okay so i'm just gonna make a little note of that here so over here off to the side i'm gonna put a b for basketball and that was equal to one third of the whole school so one third of the students in the entire school play basketball okay then let's do the same thing for football football it's one sixth so for football one sixth of the students in the entire school play football and just as like a little added bonus question here uh which sport has the most participation basketball or football meaning like which fraction is greater that would be basketball so we have a higher number of students who play basketball versus football because one third is greater than one sixth okay so it says write a sentence comparing the relationship between the basketball players and the football players uh, so we could just say i don't know there's probably lots of different ways we could say this but we could say um just to compare the relationship let's say one third is greater than one six again lots of ways we can do this but when it says compare that makes me think that we need this inequality sign here we haven't talked about that word in a long time but remember when you put a little comparison symbol there it's called an inequality sign uh, so we're basically just saying one third is greater than one sixth and then it says how do the factors <clears throat> impact the product meaning factors those are the numbers that you multiply together. Well, how did those numbers we multiply together impact the product? How did those factors <clears throat> basically like tell us what the product was going to look like? And we've talked about this before. <clears throat> Excuse me. You guys have been taught so many times that when you multiply numbers, the, the answer, the product has to be a bigger number. And that's not true that's not always true now i mean it's true with whole numbers right like if we're doing two times three the product is six so yeah your product is greater than the two factors that you just multiplied together but that rule applies to whole numbers we have to remember <clears throat> excuse me sorry guys we have to remember that fractions <clears throat> they follow their own set of rules so it's just like when you compare fractions right so like go back down here when we compared one third and one six normally we would say that three look is less than six so that usually makes a lot of people think that one six is greater but that's not true because we have to remember fractions are parts of a whole so fractions to start off with are already less than one whole they're showing you a fractional part of a whole amount and also denominators specifically show us the sizes of parts so for that reason even though three is smaller than six a pizza that's been divided into thirds is going to give you a larger slice than a pizza that was divided into six so we have to remember that fractions they don't follow the same rules as whole numbers that they follow their own set of rules and the same thing applies whenever we're multiplying fractions they follow their own set of rules so let's go back to this question again right here in yellow look i'm trying to highlight it in yellow but that obviously is not working very well <clears throat> but anyways the question says how do the factors impact the product so how do the two numbers that we multiply together affect the answer how do they affect the product so let's go back up here to part a so for part a one half of two thirds well we got one third one third is less than the two numbers you multiply together one third is less than one half and it's also less than two thirds so what happened here the answer got smaller well why did the answer get smaller it got smaller because let me circle this in purple look right here it got smaller because look right here in purple because we had the total that's why we had the total the total was two-thirds so if we're saying that two-thirds of the students in our school play sports what fraction of those students are playing basketball only it can't be greater than two-thirds because only two-thirds of the students at your school are playing sports so if half of those students are playing basketball only then it can't exceed the total it can't be greater than the total so basically what is this one half doing to the total 
It's pulling down the value. It's making the value of the total smaller because we're basically saying we want to know what is half of this total. It's just like if I say, what's half of 10? Well, half of 10 is equal to five, but five is a smaller number. So when I say half of 10, what is that one half doing to the 10? It's pulling down the value. It's making the product smaller. Okay, so same thing here. Half of two thirds is making our answer smaller. What about in part B? Part B, it says one fourth of two thirds. So again, two thirds, I'm going to circle that in purple right here. Look, that's our total. That's the fractional amount of students in the entire school that play sports. So that's the total. Well, we're saying one fourth of those students play football only. So what is that one fourth doing to the total? It's pulling it down. It's making it smaller. Because again, if we're saying that two thirds of the students play sports, but only one fourth of those students are playing football, that means you don't have everybody playing football. Not every single student who plays sports is playing football, right? So that one fourth, the way it's impacting the product is it's pulling down the value of the total. It's pulling down the value of the two thirds and it's making it smaller. And as you can see, look at our product right here. One sixth. One sixth is less than two thirds, right? And one sixth is also less than one fourth. So that's how the factors are impacting the product. So we're going to write this together and I'm going to do the best I can. We're going to say factors. You can probably write this faster than I can, but I'm trying. Um, so we're going to say factors decrease. So when I say it's pulling down the value, that's what I mean. It's, it's decreasing the value. It's making it smaller. So factors decrease. the how could we say this factors decrease the overall value meaning like the overall product the overall answer so the factors decrease the overall value so it's pulling down the value of the total which is therefore giving us a smaller answer than the two numbers we multiplied together and that's something we're going to talk more about in the future, um, specifically next week, we're really going to dig in to how the factors are impacting the product. Okay. But this is how the factors are decreasing the overall value. Cause think about it. If it's part of total, you already had the total you're solving for part of that total. So we're going to be pulling down the value of the total. Okay. So that's why when you multiply a fraction times a fraction, the answer actually will be a smaller number than the factors. Okay. So again, you have to remember fractions, they follow their own, own set of rules here. So even though you've been told your whole life that multiplying numbers gives you a greater product, that's not true. Not all the time when we're specifically talking about fractions. Okay. All right, guys. So right now we've been in math for about 30 minutes. Uh, so we still have a ways to go here. So what I'm going to have you do now is if you'll turn to the next page, <clears throat> turn to the next page, you have a, like a bunch of word problems in there, okay? Uh, looking at this, you've got 18 word problems, okay? So what I'm going to let you do, and I really hope y'all can do this well, especially with a sub in a room, okay? Because guys, this is highly tested on the EOG, and even if I'm not there, we got to move like the show's got to go on. We got work to do. Okay. So what I'm going to have y'all do is solve as many word problems as you can before class is over with a partner, with a partner. So before you get crazy and start looking all over the room, which I know you already did, um, this partner needs to be somebody who sits close to you. We're not getting up. We're not moving all over the room. You know how to do this. It's somebody who is sitting close to you. Yes, a group of three will be acceptable, but we should not have like five groups of three, okay? Um, if you want to work alone, that's fine. That's totally fine if you choose to work alone. I know some of you prefer that and that's okay, all right? So here are your directions. Listen, so you and your partner are going to start with number one, 
okay? And you need to write down for each type of word problem what type of problem you think it is, just like on your homework. So you're going to write MC if you think it's a multiplicative comparison. Don't think that there's not going to be some of those in here, okay? I purposely don't spend a lot of time on this one because it's an easier type of word problem to identify, okay? Uh, same thing with area. Write A if it's area. Again, I purposely have not covered that one because you guys know area by fifth grade, okay? You know what area looks like. And then, of course, the big one is part of total. So for each word problem, you're going to read it with your partner, write down what type of word problem you think it is, and then solve from there. Models are acceptable, but I also want to see the numerical expression as well. And of course, make sure that you are simplifying your final answer. If you don't get through all of these, that is totally okay, uh, but do not skip around, okay? Do not skip around. I want you to do them in order because when I come back tomorrow, uh, we're going to go over them in order, okay? So this is where I'm going to leave you guys. So I'm going to stop the video in just a second. You and your partner, get together, read, start with number one, and there should not be any side conversations. It's you and your partner only. You're tackling this together. And by my clock, you should have roughly anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, which means you have definitely enough time to knock out very many word problems. So several of these should be done. Okay. All right, guys, this is where I leave you. Good luck and get started. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.